everybody, welcome back. And if this is your first time to my channel, my name is Amanda and I like to show you how to cook without a recipe. So today is actually kind of funny because last week I made this amazing dish called uh, cilantro lime chicken and I was editing the video and the sound was out and I was really frustrated because it was, it was so good. And I posted a photo I had taken of that dish on my Instagram account at ditdot and one of my friends said, oh, you've got to make that dish again. And since it was so tasty and so delicious, I said, you know what? I'll put it back on the menu next week and we'll do it all over again. Now, part of that dish was this peach salsa that I made. The original recipe actually was a mango salsa, but they didn't have mango at the store that day. So I bought peaches instead and it was really good. So, to like your utter confusion, because I know you clicked on a video about fish tacos or maybe mango uh, peach salsa. I don't even know how I'm gonna do this yet. Um, this salsa was so good that I'm making it tonight early and I'm gonna make fish tacos for dinner tonight. And then the leftovers of the salsa I'm going to use in that chicken dish. So the salsa is very versatile. So um, let's just go ahead and dive right in. All right, you see my pug down here, Watson. He always gets really confused about why I'm talking to a big empty room. <laughs> so I've got a bowl uh, because I'm... <laughs> that was my dog chasing my cat. <clears throat> always fun. Anyway, I've got a big bowl to do all my mixing as, of my ingredients. Hey, <sighs> the cats and dogs are not enjoying each other today. All right, so the fast way to peel garlic a lot of times right there is, like you saw, I just smashed it. And a lot of times that's a really good, easy way to peel your garlic. And then you'll wanna cut off this root end because especially in a dish like this where you're not cooking it down, it's gonna stay hard. And we want a super fine dice or mince or actually I'm gonna show you a little bit how to make a paste here. So my tip stays down on the cutting board and I'm just kind of seesawing my knife across until I get a good fine basis. Oh goodness, I really should have used my blue cutting board. But you can see the garlic's just really small, but here's what we're gonna do next. I'm gonna get a little bit of salt and I'm gonna put it on this garlic. And this coarse salt will actually help kind of grind the garlic up a little bit more. And then I'm gonna take the edge of my knife and push down at an angle. And we do that a couple of times and it'll help kind of like paste up the garlic. Alternatively, if you don't wanna use this step, if you've got a microplaner, which is like a, what I would almost consider an essential kitchen tool, microplaning your garlic is really good. Or using a garlic press will be also beneficial. If you're gonna use a garlic press, I would almost use two cloves of garlic because the garlic press steals a lot of your garlic. What I mean is like a lot of it stays behind on the press and you don't really get to use the whole clove. All right, so I'm going to put that in my bowl and you're gonna to get to see how dull my knives are. I keep complaining, but I've yet to take my knives to get them sharpened. Um, these are Hinkle's knives, I think. We, my husband and I were trying to decide, we think they're about 20 years old and they've been sharpened many times over the years. And if you get a nice, expensive quality knife, it's an investment because you can have it for many years to come with, you know, the occasional taking it to a place that'll sharpen it. Um, a dull knife is one of the most dangerous things you can have in the kitchen. It is on my to-do list, but I just don't want to be parted with my knives. I was actually going to, I was going to make myself do it this week. I'm like, Amanda, you got a cooking channel. You need to like practice what you preach. All right. So the first time I only did one tomato, but because I want to use this recipe for two, dinners, I'm going to kind of like double it. Um, so I don't really, like I said, often use recipes. I use them as a jumping point, an inspiration, if you will. And then 
we work with the flavors that I like. So many salsa, or my family, you know, for instance, many salsas are gonna have a jalapeno or some kind of pepper in them, which I personally would love, but my kids do not like spicy food, so we're making a very mild salsa today. So I'm cutting around the stem part of the tomato because that's, you know, not going to be pleasant to chew down on. So it's been a very busy day. I'm trying to get the salsa done super quick because in, yikes, in about 10 minutes, I've got to take my kids to their Taekwondo class. So it's my night. And then that's why I've got fish tacos on the menu. I think I'm going to do this as a separate video. I'm going to put the salsa up because, again, it's so versatile that you can use it with different um, dinners. And then the fish tacos will cook up so quickly. Okay, so now I've got some red onion. Um, if you don't have red onion, which, you know, arguably, <laughs> my, my daughter Izzy and I were talking about this. We're like, it's purple, but it's called a red onion. Um, if you don't have a red onion, you could just use like some scallions, green onions, or a sweet onion would be good in it too. I wouldn't, I mean, if you used a white onion, I'd probably use less because just a pure white onion is going to be a little bit more pungent, a little bit, have a little bit more bite to it than some of these other choices. So again, you're going to do this to taste. So I'm going to, I mean, I'm using like maybe a quarter of this onion, not, not a ton, but just enough to give it some good flavor. And I'm cutting it pretty small because you got to think about when you've got a spoonful on your mouth, how big of a piece of an onion would you want in each bite? So giving it a good rough chop. And again, keeping that tip lets you just kind of rock your blade across and go quickly with it. Got onion flying everywhere though. It's another, I wanna invest in some bigger cutting boards and not white ones. My, my last kitchen, I had uh, black countertops. So these white cutting boards would have been great. But this kitchen, I, I love these white countertops. Although I like to, uh, Say they're my new hobby to try to keep them white. Okay, I'm trying to decide, do I wanna cut the peaches or the avocado? I'm gonna do the peaches. Okay, so these are actually frozen peaches. So I just put them in the microwave for like, I think it was 30 or 45 seconds. They're still frozen a little bit, but that's gonna make them easier to chop. I don't have to peel the peach. I don't have to um, worry about trying to separate it from the stone, which is what the seed is called and so awesome. So again, the original Pinterest recipe that I found with this recipe called for mango, and I think it was a fresh mango, but um, I would have used frozen and they just didn't have it at the store. So I bought, they didn't have any frozen or fresh mangoes because we're in the middle of the winter here in the Pacific Northwest. Um, so I bought peaches because like, you know, I think that would be really good too. And it really was. And then of course, like I said, that video didn't end up working out. So when I went to the grocery store, um, since then they did have mangoes and I bought the mangoes, but I debated, I'm like, do I want peaches or do I want the mangoes that the original recipe called for? But I really liked the peaches. So we're gonna stick with peaches this time. So again, I just microwaved probably more than I need, but I just wanna see what a good ratio is gonna taste like. And then um, we get some olive oil. I need to refill this soon. Give it a good drizzle, a little bit more salt, cause you know, we put a tiny bit in with that garlic, but that wasn't very much. Ooh. And we're gonna rough chop up some cilantro. So I actually <laughs> was gonna film this earlier today and I got out all my ingredients and then I realized, oh, I forgot to buy cilantro at the grocery store, but I was running to 
the grocery store again this afternoon for a couple other items. And so, okay, this cilantro feels kind of gritty. So I'm gonna run it into the sink real quick and kind of rinse off. Like it feels like it might have some dirt on it. So I'm gonna squeeze it and kind of actually pat it dry a little bit. Ugh, I hate it when it sticks to my hand. Give it a rough chop. A probably better way to clean it, and my mom is probably cringing, but um, a probably better way to clean it would be to actually float it in a bowl of water for a minute. Then you would let all the dirt kind of sift to the bottom, fish it out, and then dry it. But I don't have time for that. I gotta take the kids to Taekwondo in five minutes. <laughs> So we're going fast here. All right, avocado. Okay, so you're gonna pray to the avocado gods that it's perfect and green and perfect. So you want your avocado to be kind of sort of, you know, soft to the touch, but not too soft. And you turn it, <gasps> avocado, beautiful. See, that's why the first video didn't work because, oh, I have no butter knives, I have no clean, oh, here they are. The first avocado in my first one was pretty brown, but it still tasted good. It wasn't rotten, it was just not the prettiest avocado. So I'm just taking my butter knife because I don't wanna cut myself with a dull chef's knife. If it was sharper, it'd actually be safe to do because you have more control. Um, and I'm just scooping out some of this avocado there are some much prettier, fancier ways to scoop avocado, but this is fine. And I'm gonna give it, again, a rough dice, but I'm gonna be careful because I don't want to uh, smash it. And I'm going to stir this up. And again, I invite you to add a little bit of jalapeno, and I'm making this up before our Taekwondo, so these flavors will have time to kind of dance and mellow together. And it's just gonna be tastier uh, this evening or you know tomorrow as these flavors have time to kind of mellow together. So I'm stirring it before I add my avocado because I don't want to turn this into like guacamole. I don't want, I wanna keep it kind of whole. So Oh, lime juice. Let me grab some lime juice. So fresh squeezed lime would be great, but this is uh, pure lime juice, not from concentrate. And it's great to keep on hand for so many different recipes, especially if you like to cook Thai. A lot of Thai recipes have lime in it. If you don't have a fresh squeezed lime or lime juice, um, adding a little bit of a Vinegar would be good, like a rice wine vinegar or apple cider vinegar. Mm. It's really good. Okay. I actually think it needs a little bit more garlic in it, which I will go ahead and do. Oh no. My dog is gonna help me clean up the avocado that I just dropped on the floor. Let's do one more gar clove of garlic. Mm. So smash, strip the paper off, and give it a rough chop. And I'm gonna throw out that little root end. Yummy. All right. I didn't chop that one, it's fine. Obviously. <laughs> All right, let's give this another taste. I mean, it's family, so I can, you know, use the same spoon. Mm, perfect. 
There you go. Thank you so much for taking time to watch me today. And I will, you know, link the fish tacos and the cilantro lime dish to this video. If you would take a moment to hit the subscribe button, I would really appreciate that. And we'll see you next time. Bye.